All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Today is Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021, and there is a fair amount of news to report on today. Um, I just wanted to say the reason why this episode has come out a little bit later in the day than normal is because uh, Camden and myself are interviewing some very interesting people for some more long-form episodes, so um, hopefully uh, that will turn out to be pretty good and all of you will enjoy. Now, with that being said, I wanted to start off by talking about what's going on here in Canada very quickly and for those of you that have been following either the, either the Kraken segments or if you're a member on the Patreon you know for a fact that I myself have personally said that if a certain bill in Canada by the name of Bill C10 C-10 passes in Canada then I may actually in fact move to the United States or uh, you know a certain state within America where this is not uh, this is not pre- uh, prevalent and the reason why I say this is because the bill is very controversial even within Canada. And let me just make this very clear. When something is controversial in Canada, you can you can bet your you're behind that it's going to be controversial in the states. And I say that because there's usually not too many things that are controversial in Canada. Canada, the, the, the people of Canada, the government tends to be much more liberal leaning than that of the U.S., which, by the way, is totally fine. Respect the politicians, respect the people, sorry, respect the people that voted in those politicians. Don't, you don't have to respect the politicians. But anyways, let me give you guys a bit of an idea of what we're looking at here. So um, the headline is Liberals Pass Bill C-10 to Regulate Social Media and Streaming. The legislation needs to win passage through the Senate, which is a process that could be preempted by an election later this year that may in fact kill the bill end quote now before i go on that's why i'm saying there is still time that's why i'm not jumping to conclusions yet but essentially folks the reason why this is such a controversial bill is because the canadian government with this bill effectively directly and indirectly basically gets to choose and curate their own algorithms and insert them into Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, you name it. Now, the reason why this is so scary is because, yes, big tech's algorithms are already pretty bad with censorship, but the Canadian government has made it very clear under the Trudeau administration or the Trudeau cabinet that they would actually try to enforce much more authoritative sources if this bill were to pass fully. Now, authoritative sources means, again, mainstream media, whether it's Canadian mainstream media or American mainstream media or European, it doesn't matter. It effectively will basically and this is what experts are saying to silence and, and censor people like myself uh, even people folks who are subscribed to my channel so you folks who are subscribed to the to YouTube and all that I don't know about Spotify and Apple Podcasts, but I know for a fact on YouTube if the Canadian government can get their their fingers in there metaphorically they can set the algorithm up so that it's like well even though you know you're subscribed to Generation Z in this case we still don't feel like this news that video he put out this morning is important so we're just not going to let you know that he put it out you know what I mean? So anyways, I'd like to get all of your folks' opinions on that. I think it really is um, it is interesting, and I have to say it is without a doubt controversial here in Canada. So anyways, moving on. The next thing is that Italy has lifted their mask mandate nationwide as of June 28th, which is, I believe, uh, Monday, this coming Monday. Um, Again, look, each country can do what they want. Different countries are saying different things. Again, depending on the numbers, but we then have to ask ourselves, are those numbers fake? Are they inflated? Are, are they, you know, are they deflated? All these different things, right? So again, I don't want to extrapolate into things that I can't really uh, come to a, a general conclusion to, right? The next thing is that multiple, and this is big, by the way, folks, multiple .com and .net websites or domains directly linked to Iranian websites have been seized by the U.S. government including one of Iran's press websites, which seems to be deliberately coordinated by the United States. Now, what's interesting, too, is that um, the United States government has actually basically said, I think the White House had said it in the past hour or so, and lucky I waited a little bit later in the day to, to report the news, they had said that they did in fact seize a handful of Irani- Iranian-linked domains, excuse me, Again, cyber warfare. With that being said, though, this is scary because then this conflates into the whole thing of freedom of speech. Now, yes, we can talk about how Iran is very limited with regards to what, you know, people can see there. So, for example, from my understanding, I believe Twitter is still blocked in Iran as well as many other things as well, too. I do have some people that that watch the the show in Iran and I have to send them like 
different links and routes and different things to, to get around it sometimes. But, you know, when when you when you look at, uh, at the way this comes through, again, if there is a cyber warfare, uh, asymmetrical war going on between many, you know, nations and, and powers of the world, fine. But here's the thing. It affects everyone. You know what I mean? Whether it's a cell phone outage or a cell tower outage, excuse me, or whether it's a, a internet outage or a website outage, this is the problem. It now seeps into the public domain of people that are simply just trying to live their lives. Now, again, this is a very, uh, it may be a bad example that I just gave, but I'm talking about the relative, you know, general concept of how this could go and is going for the rest of the world, right? So if you're someone in, for example, I don't know, let, let's just say, um, I don't know, let's just name a random in Cuba, for, let's just say, right? And you're just going about your day and you make your living online based off of Cuban linked websites or domain names. What happens if that gets shut down? You cannot provide a living for your family. Why? Because, you know, some other country is in a is in a proxy cyber asymmetrical warfare with with Cuba. You see what I'm saying, folks? Now, again, I'm not. Uh, Cuba is just an example that has nothing to do with this, but you know what I mean. The next thing is that Israel, uh, Israel, excuse me, their new prime minister, Naftali Bennett, has said that there is a new uh, Delta, so-called Delta variant and has encouraged people not to travel. What stuck with me more specifically, folks, was not that the Israeli prime minister said, oh, there's this Delta variant going around, so everybody be careful. It's the way in which he said it. Whether you watch his announcement or you read the transcript, what I find interesting here, folks, and again, this is all up for... Uh, for you know each individual to interpret and decide for themselves i'm not going to tell you folks how to think however he did say this new quote so-called delta variant end quote which i find interesting he brought it up more than once those two words so-called maybe he personally doesn't believe in it maybe he hasn't seen any data yet to, to show there's proof i don't know i find it interesting that he chose those words maybe i'm overlooking it but again i felt it was necessary to to bring that up when a, a world leader particularly of a country that we all know whether on the public Public level or a back end level has, has a lot of power and they call this new alleged variant they call it so-called that's interesting right because you think that these world leaders would have direct access to the most cutting edge information you know i say that with air quotes from the who and things like that so again it, it, it's hard to say right the next thing is that um john podesta was on cnn this morning and he called for biden to reveal more about ufos <sighs> Unfortunately, again, and this is putting politics aside, Biden, he doesn't know the left hand from the right hand, it seems like. And I say that with all due respect. I'm really not trying to shit on the guy. But at this point, come on, you know, so uh, is that going to happen? Who knows? Whatever John Podesta calls for doesn't I don't think is going to change the 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 discourse or the course of disclosure, if you will. But, you know, we'll see what happens. The next thing is that Iran has seized 7,000 cryptocurrency machines in an abandoned factory just west of Tehran. Um, now, remember, crypto mining is illegal in Iran now. We don't know if those machines were used prior to them banning it, and that's what made them ban it, such vast amounts of machines, and they probably said, holy crap, where's all this energy coming from, right? Um, or maybe, as a matter of fact, uh, th there may have been some people still mining, and uh, they, they arrested them and what have you. Again, they made the law. It's, uh, you know, crypto mining is banned in Iran, so... That's, that's the way it is. I don't see why that would be so controversial, but, you know, maybe I'm missing context. But anyways, um, the next thing is that uh, I wanted to talk about something regarding Telegram, uh, particular uh, pertaining to Apple and Google specifically. So let's take a look right here. According to Disclose.tv, and for those who don't know what that is, it's a very, re in my humble opinion, reliable, independent uh, source of, of news reporting that is not, f at least from my knowledge, funded by any of the big, you know, oligarchs that run... Uh, uh, that run the West or that's truly run the West and things like that. But take a look. The big tech oligarchs of Google and Apple have started to censor Disclosed TV's moderated public chat group on Telegram, not the channel, the chat group. They said, we are hearing other chat group... Uh, chat groups are affected as well looks like the okay this is just a bit of a joke at the end but looks like the techno fascists uploaded a new blacklist to skynet uh, you know a bit of a joke at the end there but anyways um more specifically, basically, all of those who downloaded Telegram from Google and Apple app stores cannot read the comments in the Disclosed TV moderated public chat linked to their channel anymore. Now, interesting, I was writing this down just as a handful of minutes later, Disclosed TV then said, oh, no, they undid that ever since we started discussing it. And other news outlets noticed this as well. Smaller news outlets and more so independent ones. But interesting how Apple and Google backtracked right when this went public. They were probably hoping that nobody was going to bring this up and then 
no one would notice the censorship. And this is, I believe, my understanding, this is why the European Union and Germany are investigating Apple and Google and a couple other companies with regards to their algorithms of censorship and things like that. Because, again, that's kind of scary. The fact that you downloaded, in this case, uh, in this particular example, Telegram from the App Store. Right, whether it's the iPhone or the uh, sorry the Apple or the Google App Store, they can now get in there and censor certain things that they don't want you to read. That's insane. So what now? How are we going to do it? Telegram would have to literally allow you to download their app from an independent website with an independent server, which maybe they do have. I honestly have not checked, but again, that would be the idea, uh, um, similar to what Parler had no choice to do, right? Either It was either if you had the app downloaded before Apple and Google took it off, you can keep it. If not, there's a, you got to go to the website as they developed it later on to download it, right? So... Um, the next thing is that Michael Burry has recently deleted his Twitter account, and he's the one who, again, I mentioned the other couple of days ago, the big short guy made a bunch of money off of seeing the big bubble collapse, and he's saying this is the biggest bubble in every industry ever. So he made that warning, and then I think it was roughly 48 hours later, which is today, deleted his Twitter account. So, you know. Um, the next thing is that UEFA uh, forbids uh, has forbidden to light up the arena in rainbow colors during the upcoming Germany versus Hungary match. Now, I presume that the rainbow colors have to do with, you know, showing support of the LGBTQ community and all that, which is fine. But at the same time, look, if this commission has decided they don't want to do that, look, it is Europe, but it's not the West. It's not the West where, you know, it, people are more for that. I, again, different parts of the world and different cultures of the world have different perspectives. Now, again, let me make something clear. Just because they're not putting up these colors doesn't mean that they're anti-gay or anti-lesbian or anti-trans or something like this. It's a simple choice. If there's going to be tons of outcry, I, with all due respect, I'm sorry, I don't want to hear it. And a lot of people know I have, I have tons of friends that are gay. I have quite a few friends that are uh, transgender, some of the nicest people ever. But to me, it's very simple. If this commission didn't want to put the colors up, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? There's much more, in my opinion, prevalent and important things to talk about. But, you know. So, anyways, again, it's a respectful decision. Doesn't mean that they're against it. And, again, if they are, that's a different story. But, at the same time, it is their own commission, their own country. It's not America. It's not Canada. Maybe a little bit different, right? And, again, that's not to say that that is right. But, you got to respect it at the same time. I'm just trying to report in the most unbiased way possible, but, you know, I've seen quite a bit of backlash regarding this. I think there's much more important things to be discussing, um, even respectfully, with the utmost respect, in the trans community, LGBTQ community. I think there's far more pressing issues than the fact that UEFA didn't put colors on their stadium, to tell you the truth, right? Um, the next thing is that a leaked Iowa school document shows that teachers must tell students that the phrase make America great again is actually a secret cover for white supremacy with documents to prove it. So, OK, here's the thing. I don't believe even today that the phrase make America great again should be associated with white supremacy or anything like that. Now, to play devil's advocate, people will say, Dave, Trump has used it so much. He has stained the name, if you will, depending how you look at it. Right. And I understand both sides. I truly do. With that being said, I really don't believe and maybe this is too much of an oversimplistic explanation, but I really don't believe that teachers should be telling, oh, you know, kids in class, especially younger kids, you know, hey, kids, uh, you know, make America great again equals bad. I don't think so. I really do believe you should let the kids find out for themselves. And if you're going to talk about it in class, present both perspectives, right? Again, Trump is a polarizing figure. There's no doubt about that. So at the same time, his, him being associated with that phrase could be polarizing. Yes, but I don't think you should just automatically say, hey, no, 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 no. You can't use it because, you know, white supremacy, no good. Because, I mean, at the same time, to play devil's advocate, it's just like saying, you know, Black Lives Matter or Antifa. Some people in there are very good intentioned. Some of them are not. So why isn't that being taught in schools as well, right? And I'm not trying to point out Black Lives Matter Antifa specifically, just trying to make a point here. You see what I'm saying? So ultimately, it comes down to perspective. Again, some people might say, hey, let don't teach that in school whatsoever. Other people might say, you know, let the kids go home, talk to their parents about it, decide for themselves. But, you know, parents could influence you too, which is equally as much of an issue as teachers as well. It, it's, it's, it's tough. It really is, folks. And, you know, um, it's not it's not easy to find a solution. And I'm not saying I have one either, but again, if you're going to say something like that, then they should also be fair and talk about the other side of things too, right? You're going to talk about white supremacy, you should talk about some of the other things happening as well, but you know, um, 
and I'm not trying to, you know, again, white supremacy is definitely a real thing. Let me make that clear. I'm not trying to deter or downplay white supremacy. Let me make that clear. Um, the next thing is that the WHO has said vaccinating kids is not a, quote, high priority, end quote. Okay, here's my problem with this. Which one is it? They change their minds every so goddamn often. I, I know that I said I would stop talking about COVID stuff, but I mean, this is this just kind of struck an emotional chord a little bit. Um, yeah, like, I I don't know. I don't know. And then one country says no to vaccinating their, their youth, which is fine because it's their country. Then other countries that were following that country's rules say, well, follow all the rules except for what they just did. It's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Trudeau did that with the CDC. It was always follow the CDC until, you know, until um, the CDC said that if you're vaccinated, fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask or whatever. And then Trudeau said, no, don't follow that. So I'm just talking about what's happening in my country just to relate that, folks. I'm sure in your own countries, if you're listening or watching this, you're, you're hearing the similar things. The next thing is that Putin has accused the U.S. of orchestrating the 2014 Ukraine coup. I am inclined to agree with him. Not that I firmly agree with him, but I am inclined to. Why? I highly encourage, if any of you have Crave or Showtime, to watch um, Oliver Stone's uh, documentary, uh, Showtime series, uh, The Putin Interviews. I think you can also find it on YouTube. I think you can find it on YouTube. But anyways, some of you may like Oliver Stone, some of you may not. But I must tell you, folks, you really want to get an unbiased approach and take out the, the Western propaganda as much as you could without, you know, Showtime influencing and all that. I highly recommend you watch that because they talk about this Ukrainian coup. I'm like 85 to 90 percent sure the CIA orchestrated that coup. With that being said, it could have been a false flag. You know, Russian intelligence could have did it and made it seem like the CIA. So Putin could say many years later, look, it was you guys. But again, it's that's part of intelligence, right? With that being said, I still encourage all of you to watch the it's called the Putin interviews with Oliver Stone. And um, it's literally uh over the course, it takes place over the course of two, three years, and Oliver Stone meets up with Putin whenever Putin is available, and he literally, they sit down and he asks questions. Uh, he shoots from the hip, I must say. I, I, in my opinion, he did a good job. Now, again, some of you might not think so, but either way, I think for those interested in global politics, strategy, intelligence, military, I think you would enjoy that. So, uh, The next thing is that the Taliban has captured uh, Tajikistan's uh, border crossing. Hopefully, I didn't mis butcher that pronunciation. Um Look, again, this is the whole thing, right? The Taliban running, uh, I don't want to say rampant or free, but with far more uh, ability to do what they want now that the U.S. is out of there. So this is, this again, comes down to personal decision. You know, everyone knew that they were going to gain power, and that might not always be a bad thing, but that might not always be a good thing either. So, you know, it, it's hard to say. Um, the next thing is that uh, Trump allegedly wanted to send COVID-infected Americans to Guantanamo Bay uh, earlier last year. I'm not going to lie, I found that kind of funny. I don't know how serious he was about that. I just thought I would throw that in as a bit of a joke in the sense of like, you know, I don't really think that would have went through, but <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, we can we can only extrapolate at this point and imagine, right? The next thing is that Argentina and Mexico have withdrew their political envoys after the Nicaraguan crackdown started. Sure, if I'm the leader of a country and some of my representatives or ambassadors are in another country where that country's leaders are rounding people up, oof, yeah, I, I'd probably want to get the hell out of there too. Um, the next thing is that there is heavy fighting reported in the Ethiopian Tigray region. I don't know specifics, just if anyone has, you know, family there or has been there or is from there, maybe you might know more than I do, but it's unfortunate to always see, right, uh, or hear. The next thing is that the CEO of Bumble uh, told all 700 employees of her company, because it's a female who started the app Bumble, um, the dating app, uh, to take the week off with pay and focus on themselves after she felt and noticed her workers were overstressed. I, I like that because, I mean, I feel like in general, regardless of what industry you're in, when you treat employees really good, they want to come back and work for you more. You know what I mean? They, if, you, if you give them that week with pay, with rest, they'll come back more effective, especially if they're overstressed. As they say, some, what, just like uh, you know, with exercise or anything else in life, sometimes ta to make sure you don't burn yourself out, sometimes taking two steps backwards is needed in order to take four steps forwards. You see what I'm saying? So it, it's interesting. I, I like that approach. She said she she looked around, said my workers are stressed. We're already making, you know, millions in profit. What the hell do we have to be greedy and I have to work them for more? Go home and chill. I agree. Honestly, 
So um, aside from that, I mean, uh, some big oil chiefs have said that crude pro uh, crude prices of oil could climb to about a hundred bucks a barrel and things like that. Look, folks. It I feel like it's not even needed to comment on at this point because it's just going to we're going to have to watch this unravel all around the world. Right. Not just oil. I'm just saying the overall way in which things are rolling out. But aside from that, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch all of you or listening and we'll catch all of you very, very soon. Cheers.